what's up and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title today, I'm going to be bringing you guys a new and exciting and hopefully helpful video for a lot of you guys who will be receiving your GCSE or A-level results over the next few days. I thought it'd be unique and give a different perspective to hear from a teacher and to hear what advice they would have to offer. Hello, my name is Barbara Njau and I am the founder of First Street Tutors. Now, I am super excited to collaborate with Francesca and she sent me five questions to answer from a teacher's perspective. So I will offer my perspective as an English and history teacher on different questions that you may have as a student. Now, First Street Tutors is essentially a collective of teachers like myself, so I'm an English and history teacher, but they're also science teachers, maths teachers, and essentially what we do on on our YouTube channel, which is also called First Rate Tutors, is we offer lots of free revision videos on different topics, including English, history, maths, and science. So for example, with the videos that I've released on the channel, you can find lots of revision summaries and revision video videos if you're studying English at GCSE and A-level. But also, be sure to check out our website, which is www.firstratetutors.com, that you will find lots of revision courses, as well as model answers for different GCSE and A-level topics. Amazing, so I hope that's kind of giving you a brief as to who Barbara is and who First Rate Tutors are. So let's get started with the questions which I've got on my phone. So question number one, with GCSE and A-level results day looming around the corner, a lot of students are worried about how their grades are going to be calculated being a teacher you can provide a unique perspective on the situation would you be able to elaborate on what you know about the grading system and how it will work now with GCSE and A level results day looming in 2020 a lot of the issues that Francesca has highlighted to me is that teachers are kind of in the know as to what will happen with this process because of course coronavirus led to the GCSE and A-level exams being cancelled and as you know as a student you've probably been very much in the dark as to how the process will work given that we haven't followed the typical exam process. Now firstly do bear in mind that when it comes to results day, on the 13th of August, which is this week on Thursday, it will be A-level results day. And on the 20th of August, which is the following week, it will be the GCSE results day. Now, if you're feeling really, really anxious and you feel somewhat in the dark, just know first off, if this helps, teachers themselves are also anxious and in the dark. Now, something like coronavirus has never happened before in our lifetimes. A global pandemic has really never happened in our lifetimes. So just bear in mind that teachers are figuring it out as we're going along, as our examination bodies and off call the examination body that looks after, of course, at Excel, AQA, WJEC, and so on. However, firstly, if you're feeling in the dark, just know this is normal. Teachers also are figuring out. We're not entirely sure how things will pan out. The second thing to bear in mind in terms of how your results are going to be rewarded, given that, of course, you did not sit exams for your topics is, firstly, teachers like myself are going to be giving judgments based on assessed past papers, on things that we've set for you in classrooms and so on. And based on the student's work that we've gotten throughout working with the student, we send off our judgments of what we think the student would have gotten had they gone on to sit their exams. This is then reviewed by two teachers. One of them has to be the head of year and another teacher just to kind of balance this perspective. Then this is sent off to the examination body. So for example, it might be sent off to AQA, it might be sent off to Edexcel and so on. Now they then check and compare the average that the teachers in that particular school have sent for their students in comparison to previous years. So for instance, if teachers for this year in 2020 are giving off way too many level nines in comparison to how many level nines and level eights were given off last year. This will then be standardized and kind of balanced a little bit more by the examination body. And of course, off call, which is the regulatory body that looks after this, has examined this year's results. And unfortunately, they have said that teachers have been way too optimistic and too generous in the grading. So they have lowered the boundaries somewhat. 
We don't know by how far these boundaries have been lowered and how this is going to look on an individual level. So of course, when the results day happens in the 13th for A-level students, this is going to be revealed and of course on the 20th for GCSE students. However, the final thing I wanted to mention is that if you're feeling anxious, number one, just remember if you've put in the effort that you needed to put in, if you've put in the work, if your teacher has asked you sometimes to submit stuff, which you've done, you've done everything in your power. Now this you cannot control. So if you can, try your best to take your mind off this process. Try if you can not to do an all nighter whilst you're waiting for the results to be released or anything. Try to, you know, engage in a hobby, try to do things that will take your mind off this process. And so number two, just remember, whatever grade you get, you've got this. It's not the end of the world. Thank you. That was so, so helpful. And um, also with the upcoming results day, many students, especially those who have university places riding on these grades, are worried that they may not get the grades that they actually deserve. So what would be your advice with dealing with such uncertainty leading up to results day? Now, as we're waiting for results day to approach, there are lots of students that are really anxious about the outcome. Now, my advice from a teacher's perspective is if you're dealing with a lot of anxiety, if you're struggling with just managing this anxiety, firstly, please bear in mind that if you've done what you've needed to do, your results will reflect the hard work you've put in. But secondly, it's now out of your hands. There's nothing you can do about it. And the worst thing you can do is literally focus on it, look at lots of things about it, get really, really obsessed about how you might be able to influence this process because you can't anymore. The final piece of advice I would have for dealing with anxiety as you're waiting for your results is it's summer holiday. And therefore, in terms of thinking about just it's the holiday, Give yourself time to do things that you would otherwise not do had you been in a normal school year. So for example, are there hobbies that you love doing that you always think, oh, if I had extra time, I would do this. Are there things that you would love doing more such as exercise, reading more? Perhaps you can spend this time and the remainder of the summer holidays actually engaging in really creative pursuits, engaging in things that you actually have a control over and that you actually enjoy. So if you're struggling with anxiety, try your best to take your mind off it. But rather than just taking your mind off it and telling yourself, I'm not going to think about it. More importantly, think about things that you would love to do, which you otherwise don't usually have time for and go ahead and do that. And along kind of the same lines, what would your advice be to students who don't necessarily get the grades that they need or want? Now, of course, results day will approach and they will happen. Now, what might you do if you open your results and you realize you've not gotten the grades that you want? Of course, this is devastating when you've worked really, really hard and you've really put your heart, for example, if you're an A-level student, you've had your heart set on a particular university that you need specific grades for, or if you're a GCSE student, you need to get certain grades for your A-levels and you've got your heart set on it and you open your results slip and you find that you haven't gotten the grades. Now, firstly, always take a deep breath and remind yourself that you've got this. Do bear in mind that failure is normal. This is a normal part of life. The, the most important thing is mindset when dealing with failure. So always tell yourself that you've got this regardless of the outcome, you can positively affect your future. And secondly, if you do need to cry, just cry it out. That is again, very, very normal. However, the third thing that I would advise is if your grades are really, really contingent and dependent on the university place that you get, so you had a conditional offer and it was conditional upon you getting that grade. Or for instance, if you wanted to sit a really particular A-level and that was dependent on you getting a particular GCSE grade, do consider taking resets because this is an important option that you can take, especially in November 2020, to improve your grades. And of course, you already know what you're going to be resetting. Therefore, it's probably going to be easier second time round. 
However, the fourth and final thing I would say is that if resets are not an option, this is the time to, even if you're feeling really stressed out, really, really tired, really upset, sometimes emotionally drained, you need to get on the phone, call your sixth form, your college if you're moving on to A-levels, or call your university and see if there's any breathing room for them to still take you on with the current grades that you have. But always tell yourself that you've got this. Now, the next question is, facing students who unfortunately do not get the grades that they need, are the options of resitting or going through clearing? For years and years, there's been a lot of stigma kind of surrounding the idea of resitting because it's often associated with students that haven't put enough work into their studies, which is not always the case. What would your advice be for students who may want to reset their exams, but are kind of worried about how it may look or the stigma surrounding it? Now, here's some advice for some of you who might find that you haven't gotten the grades that you need and you have to reset. Now, there's always been a lot of shame and embarrassment over having to reset. There's almost a stigma associated with resetting, which I think is very unfortunate and really undeserved. Now, if you find yourself in the category and in the camp of people who will need to reset, either you're gonna need to reset some of your GCSEs to improve on your grades, or you're gonna need to reset some of your A levels in order to secure a position in the university that you need to go to. Firstly, remember that resetting is not something to be embarrassed about. In fact, what you're going to feel even now, you might feel embarrassed, but actually tell yourself that in two years time, in five years time, this reset process will not matter. In fact, you might even look back on this period and see it as a really pivotal turning point in really focusing you in on what's really important and in you making the right decision for your future. The second thing is when it comes to resets, do bear in mind that, especially this year, this year was been a really bizarre year for everybody. Again, as I've mentioned, coronavirus, a global pandemic is something that we've never experienced before in our lifetime. So bear in mind that if you're feeling a little bit guilty about not necessarily having achieved your top potential, this has also played a role in that. So don't be embarrassed and just remind yourself and be kind to yourself because you have pushed yourself during a time which was a really difficult time for everybody. The final thing is that when you are resetting and if you make the decision to do your resets, be really crystal clear on your goals. Sit down and write down what do you want to achieve out of this reset? What grade do you want to achieve? Where do you want to see yourself in the year's time? If you're moving from GCSEs to A-level, what do you need to get? And where do you see yourself in a year's time when it comes to that A-level? If you're moving on from A-level and you're resetting because you need to get into university, be really clear on what you need to do to get those top marks and be clear on what you are willing to sacrifice. It might be maybe sacrificing your social life, sacrificing time that you otherwise would be spending on other things in order to get top marks and top potentials but see resets as a thing to really focus in on and to center yourself on your goals and your purpose but also if there's people who laugh at you maybe they look down on you they're not going where you're going in two years time in five years time you will even forget about them and what they say really won't matter but where you are will now following on from that and this is the final question alongside clearing there is also the options to apply to better universities or courses in the circumstances that students actually receive better grades than they anticipated and as a teacher would you be able to give advice to students who are interested in adjustment or who want to know more about the clearing process now conversely you as a student, especially if you're sitting your A-levels and you've just gotten your A-level results, may actually find yourself in the really fortunate position of doing better than what you had anticipated. In other words, you had certain predicted grades that you accepted, but actually when you open your results slip, you find that you have done way better and you find that perhaps the university option that you're going for or the degree option that you've taken to go on to university is you're maybe overqualified for that because you've done way better. Now, my advice when it comes to clearing, because people usually think about clearing if, for example, your university doesn't accept you. Actually, there's also the clearing option through UCAS for people who do fare better and they want to maybe revise the university they want to go to. They want to go for a slightly more challenging university to get into because they've now got the grades. I would 
absolutely advise that you go through for that clearing option. Secure yourself the best possible option because you've worked hard and you have gotten the grades that you deserve. Do remember that university is a really crucial time in our lives. It's a massive turning point academically for most of us. So you are making a massive and a major decision with what university you go to. So make sure that you have the best possible options that you can. And what this means is that on results day, if you do find that you've done better, figure out which university's spots you want to go for, which degrees that you otherwise maybe were not really considering because you thought that you might not get the grades for it. If that option opens up and there's a spot in that particular university that you want to go for, call them, message them, get in touch with them and make sure you secure yourself the best possible option. So clearing is also a really, really good option for those who do fare better. And I would absolutely advise that you go for that if you secure better grades than what you had anticipated. So that's all from my perspective as a teacher. And I want to say a massive thank you to Francesca for having offered me this opportunity to collaborate. And I hope that my feedback and my answers will help you if you're watching this and you're feeling some kind of anxiety in the lead up to results day. But also maybe you're looking at this a year before your GCSEs and you need some GCSE content. And of course, if you're an A-level student who needs extra support and help, do make sure you check out our YouTube channel, which is First Rate Tutors. And of course, also check out our website for revision materials. So thank you so much for watching and I hope this video offered you some value.